Well, happy holidays, everyone. Uh, it's really exciting time to be in Orlando here. I think our, you know, really appreciate the, the Citrus Bowl and all the activities and events they've put on for our players. I think they've had a nice week here of a little bit of time and reward for the season. Um, I think our preparation has gone well, uh, leading up to a very tough challenge. Michigan's a very good defense. I think seventh ranked defense in the country. Um, so we know we've got a tall task ahead of us. I think our players have worked extremely hard. We've got to kind of fine tune the final pieces to this thing over the next couple days and, and get ready to play a very good football team here on uh, January 1st. All right, we'll open it up for questions. We'll start over here on the left, second row. For uh, Sark and for Devontae, uh, what impresses each of you, starting with Devontae, about the Michigan secondary? Um, just how crafty they are. They they can switch it up. They can be physical. They can be patient. And just the things that they do, they switch it up, keep you keep you guessing, and have you just wondering, like, okay, what is he going to do this time? Well, I think from a scheme standpoint, I think Coach Brown does an excellent job of, you know, they, they've got a lot of man-to-man -man principles they play. And as Devontae said, they're crafty a corner. Uh, I think 21 and, excuse me, 24 and 1 are both crafty in their man-to-man -man skills. But they do a really good job in their scheme of mixing it up, mixing up different zone coverages, zone covers that match up in demand coverages. So uh, I think the challenge for the wideouts is their releases and how they're running specific routes, and then also for the quarterback because of the variations of coverages. Uh, and, you know, a quarterback's got to be on point of where his progression and where his reads need to go. Third row right on the aisle. Uh, Tennessee calls Bama Insider. I come to Devontae. We just talked with Coach Gaddis. How influential is he in you know uh, your development as a receiver? Well, I mean, every receiver coach that came in has taught all of us something different. So it, it's just depending on the type of coach they are. He's more the technical one, so he kind of taught us more of the technical things of being a receiver. We're gonna go over on the left, third row. Sorry. Uh, where, have you, where have you seen uh, Mac improve the most throughout the season? And since he took over as a starter, how has he made this team his own? Well, I think, you know, anytime you're a backup quarterback, you know, we do a really good job, in my opinion. Coach Saban does a great job in practice of getting our ones and twos a lot of reps and quality reps. But there is something to be said about when you're the one and you're taking those reps in practice and then applying it to the game. A lot of times when you're the backup, you work all week and you may not get in in that ball game. And so I think Max done an excellent job from when he got thrown in against Tennessee. It, that, that's a different formula. And then all of a sudden you get the week to prepare. You become the starter against Arkansas. And you get those reps, you get those looks, and then you go out and perform. I think it naturally just builds confidence. And with his confidence, as that has built, in my opinion, throughout the year with Mac, I think the confidence in his teammates for him has grown. You know, I think the receivers, the offensive line, all of a sudden those guys see number 10 go in there, make throws, make throws against Auburn where guys are breathing down his face at critical moments on third down, getting conversions. Um, so I think that's where he's grown. I think he's translated the practice to the game, built his own confidence, and then in turn that's built the confidence in his teammates and him as well. We're going to go in the far right in the center. Steve, um, there was an opportunity or a chance that you could have been hit hard with guys not playing in this game. Um, what, what was your reaction when you found out you're going to have pretty much a full arsenal in two? What do, you, what do you think it says about the mindset of this team? Is it those guys that made those decisions as they enter this game? Well, you know, obviously, having been here for a year now, um, you, you start to learn not just the player and the jersey number, you start to learn the character of the players we have, you know, especially on offense, the guys I deal with the most. and. These are highly competitive guys now, and these guys strive for excellence. They work extremely hard every day. They come to meetings ready to attentive, attention to detail. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the competitive spirit I think all these guys have. And um, you know, for us to have all these guys playing in the game offensively are needed. <laughs> We're going against a very good defense. Uh, but also, I just think it speaks volumes to the type of character kids we have. Um, I'm proud of the work that they've done all year and, and excited to, to have these guys go out and, and play and perform and compete uh, on the first. Back in the second row left. Devontae Carey, Clark, BamaCentral.com. Tell me a little bit about, uh, since you came in with the same class as him, what it's been like for you the last three years going against Xavier in practice? 
Um, just being knowing that you have the other side being just as competitive as you. He always want he's a perfectionist, so like he always want things to be perfect. And I know that if I'm going out to practice, I know he's going to match my intensity every day. So just going out there, having that, just makes both of us better. Third row, far right. Steve, I imagine your paths crossed with, with Jim Harbaugh when you were Washington. What were you? What, could you describe your relationship and your interactions with him and your impressions? Well, I think Jim's an excellent football coach. I mean, he's done it on every level from University of San Diego to Stanford to the 49ers, now with Michigan. I mean, he's a fantastic coach, uh, very intense guy. The one thing you know, his teams always play hard. They're physical. They're tough. Um, and and well coached, good schemes, and you you know I, I saw it as a head coach from both sides of the ball. Obviously, I'm seeing it now from a defensive perspective, but uh, I imagine they, uh, they they play well and coached well on offense and physical outfit. So, um, really good coach, really good competitor. Um, excited for the challenge to go against him again. Stand on the right in the middle, Michael. Steve Knight, your second time back at Alabama. What will be your reflections when you think back on? the 2019 season as offensive coordinator? Uh, it was a tremendous experience. Um, like I said, I, I'm fortunate. I get to go to work every day with really good people from the top down, from Coach Saban to our offensive staff to our players. I mean, these guys are fun to coach. They want to be great. Um, you know, we, we, try to, we try to push them every day, not only from a physical standpoint, but from a mental standpoint. We put things on them at a very high level. Uh, and they've responded. And so I'm just appreciative of the opportunity uh, that Coach Saban has given me to come back. And uh, it's been a joy to coach these guys. I mean, they are highly, highly competitive young men. Um, you know, th there's always going to be that kind of sour taste in your mouth in, in some capacity because we felt like we missed a couple opportunities in games that we really felt like we, we should have and could have won. Um, unfortunately, we, we didn't get that done. So the reality of it is we get one more opportunity to go show what we're about offensively. And I think our guys are going to be ready to play. Staying on the right, two rows up. Devontae, what have you seen out of Josh Job this year? He's an emotional player, obviously. How, how have you seen him kind of balance the passion that he plays with, but also being disciplined? Um, with Josh, I feel that it's just the, the will to want to play this game and just the passion he has for it. So with Josh, he go out there, he practices hard every day, and that's just him wanting to do it. So he may get frustrated at times when things don't go his way, but it's not because he's a bad person. It's just because he loves playing football. Over on your far right, second row. Steve, Jim has uh, to make an adjustment from pro style more to a spread. Um, uh, can you talk about the challenges that go into that um, from, from your personal experience? And then also, how much is that a necessity now because players you know, only stay maybe three years and go off to the – um, to the league if they're really good? Well, you know, I, I've lived that life, you know, all the way back to my days as assistant at SC. We were a total pro-style offense and kind of made the transition in my last couple years at Washington. Was in the kind of the spread, opened up shotgun world there, SC. Um, what, obviously going to Atlanta the last couple years, it was back to the pro-style, but we started to incorporate even more of the spread kind of principles there in the National Football League. And now to be back, you know, I, I think when you watch us play, and I'm sure when you watch Michigan, the, the little bit I've seen of them is, it is spread principles, it is shotgun, but if you dig down deep into it, there's a lot of pro style offense still involved in what we do and involved in what they do. Um, and I think that's the fine line, that's the balance, because you, know, you, you, wanna be, you wanna be successful. Our job is to put our players in the best position to be successful on game day. Um, but ultimately, their development as a player is critical too. And your, your intent and your attitude, your football team, I, I think you know, one of the challenges is if you just, you keep throwing it and throwing it and throwing it, you start to lose some of that foundation as a physical football team, uh, the ability to run the football, the ability to play action pass, to throw the ball down the field. So there is a fine line, and week to week that varies, obviously based on your opponent. Uh, I'm definitely a firm believer, and the more you do really well, the harder you are to defend. Um, and so you know, hopefully when you watch us, you can see a real spread type offense, but yet you can see a, a football team that can still line up and, and run downhill at you, uh, and then everything in between. And I'm sure they're they're in that process. I know Coach Gaddis is an excellent coach, and he's got a lot of the background from here as well. So 
Uh, I think that makes it tough to defend when you can do it really well. And it's been a great process for me. I've been fortunate throughout my career to be around really good coaches and really good players to evolve kind of to where we are today. We're going to go on the left, uh, on the aisle. <coughs> Ainsley Lee with Florida Citrus Sports. Um, Coach Brown called you guys like the top three to five like receiving group that he thinks he's ever coached against. What do you think set you guys apart both on and off of the field? Why do you take it? I'll follow up. Um, just how the, the one the passion that we have for it and just the will to want to go out there and dominate. Just when we're, when we're out there, we're going to try and just play not only for us, but for everybody. And so, and just like, we always try to be, we one of the smaller receiver groups and we always try to be physical and try to play bigger than what we are. So I just feel like just the will to want to, to, want to do it. You know, I'll follow up with that. I think these guys have an extremely high football IQ. Not only are they physically gifted, not only are they really great competitors, they're tough. Uh, their football IQ is very high, and as a coach, that's, that makes it enjoyable to coach them because you can put different things on them, you can move them around, you can coach conceptually rather than just one person, this is what you do on this play, and these guys eat it up. And uh, it starts with guys like Smitty and Ruggs and Jerry, but it works its way down through the entire group with Waddle, Shavers, uh, Slade Bolden, Mechie, you know, Ziggy, all, all these guys have started to embrace this. It's bigger than just me releasing at the line of scrimmage. It's big picture, it's scheme, uh, and that makes it fun for us to coach. Final question, third row on the left. Steve, you've known to a, a long time for the ball for him and all that. What was your reaction, obviously, seeing him suffer that injury, and how have you seen him um, rebound so far last several weeks? Um, I, I think I think I could speak probably for all of us. I mean, we were all hurt for the, for him, you know. To a, you know, for those of you that don't know him, and some of you in the room do know him. I mean, he's the guy when he walks in the room, he lights it up. And it doesn't matter if it's the training room, the locker room, the practice field, the equipment room, the coach's office. Uh, that guy is a true leader. Um, everybody knows the work ethic and the desire and the competitiveness he has. Um, so I think we were all very hurt. And I think the odd part is, and Coach Saban had mentioned this even right after he got hurt. When, you know, when, I, when I reached out to him after the game, I think I felt like he was picking me up. And that's just him. He's so positive. He's so upbeat. Uh, and that's how he's been throughout his, his rehab now. Um, he's in really good spirits. I don't think there's a guy who supports Mac more than Tua. Um, but that's, that's who the guy is. And, uh, you know, wherever he, his future holds for him, this guy's going to be successful in life. And I think his coaches, that's, that's all you can ask for. Coach him another year. I like to coach him forever, you know. And the, the, but that's the nature of our business, you know. Um, you recruit players, players come in, you try to develop them as best you can, have a lot of team success and ultimately individual success so that they can go on and move on in life and be successful humans. And then you bring in new people. So, um, you know, like I said, he, he's a fantastic human. And uh, forget just number 13 on the field, it's who he is off the field that I think is probably more impressive. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week. Okay,